Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to On the Flip Side. Today, we're going to be doing another worst to best, this time focusing in on the genre pushing progressive masters tool. I'm a little bit conflicted with the title of this video being worst to best, but pretty good to really good doesn't really roll off the tongue nearly as well. Tool is one of those bands that doesn't have a perfect discography, but still has a very, very solid one. There are no albums that could be considered awful, but with that being said, I think sorting out the hierarchy is doable. And over the years, this list has changed a lot. Am I in enjoyment of these albums has shifted dramatically over uh, time, so I'm going to try and pull every perspective I've had on these records to give you um, my most thorough uh, and thought through and concise list from worst to best. The worst uh, tool release, I think we're going with uh, 1992's Opiate. I like this EP, but it is very clearly a very new band stretching its legs. The material on this EP, while not the most refined, is packed with a ton of energy, and while that does play to the band's benefit, it it also is uh, generally less appealing than some of their more developed and fleshed out material later on. Even still, you've got Sweat, a fantastic opener, and really a great start to this discography. Uh, Hush, which I still really enjoy for the anti-censorship themes. I do think it's a little bit of an odd touch, though, and maybe um, a little bit removed from the whole PMRC stuff. I mean, only by like five or six years, but still. I think the consistency on this EP is a pretty big strength. Part of me, cold and ugly, and Jerk Off still hold up really well as a uh, suite for this EP, despite the latter two tracks being live songs. And the title track, Opiate, still remains one of the best songs in the Tool catalog, bar none. It's brilliantly written, and uh, it lets on just a touch of what's to come further down the line. And the re-recording also holds up really well, especially now that we've got that music video from Dominic Hailstone, which is brilliant, by the way. Go check that out when you can. I think next, uh, for me personally, and I think this might be a little bit controversial, I think it's gonna be Fear Inoculum. I think I, I really like everyone else fell victim to hype when a band this big goes that long without putting out an album expectations can get all kinds of out of whack and i wasn't expecting the greatest album of all time but i was hoping to get more maynard personally i love the first track the title track that is fear inoculum and I, I think the tribal drums and the swaying rhythms are beautiful and hypnotic this is the track that to me delivers the most on the hype another controversial take and i know someone is going to slam me for this not the biggest fan of numa i think the track's fine i, I just think it's kind of weak compared to some of the other songs. I do like the chorus because who could hate it? I'm not really into any of the interludes on this album. Unlike the earlier albums, they don't really add much and when you have to take them off of your like physical copies because uh, they won't fit on the discs, it really drives home the fact that they aren't all that necessary. I love Invincible. My, my god, it, I just adore this song. Uh, to me, by far, best track on the album. I remember hearing it on that live stream when they debuted it in Florida and I thought it sounded like shit. And of course it did. It was a live stream from like a phone, but getting to hear it on the album, I mean, mm, man, it, it's an incredibly solid cut and one of the songs that knows uh, how to pace itself really well without Maynard's vocals, which are sparse here, but when they are present, add an even heavier impact. Love that track. Descending is solid. I wish I liked it more. I made a road trip out uh, to Southern California in June of 2017 to see Tool headline uh, their little festival thing at the Glen Helen Amphitheater, and they played, I think, like, uh, a seven minute long rendition of Descending with no lyrics, of course, but it just ripped and really it, it just drilled into my head how much better uh, that track would be if it was maybe just parsed down a little bit. However, it is still pretty solid. I don't really have much to say about Culling Voices other than it is a bit hit and miss for me. I I've got to be in a specific mood for it. And when I'm in that mood, I mean, it hits really nicely. Chocolate Chip Trip was cool the first few times I heard it. Past that, it's Danny doing a killer drum solo, but it's not really a song that I listen to all that much. I think Tempest I have a real love and hate for, namely in that it is absolutely too long, but has some of the best segments in any Tool song within its length. I love the riffs on this track. Adam Jones's tone is just crushing uh, on this song, and the solo work is amazing. I just think my general thoughts on Fear Inoculum summed up is that it has grown on me since release. I do still feel like it would have um, been a, a little bit better if more of these songs were shorter, a little bit more concise in their lengths and in writing. Like, I remember when they came out and said that there are no songs shorter than 10 minutes, I, I just thought, oh, oh no. Because I think what makes those long-ass Tool songs on the other albums so special is that it builds to them, and here it kind of just tries to give it all to you at the same time, like jumping the gun on foreplay and just kind of trying to blast you with a prog metal dick to the face. Uh, anyway, I think next on the list we're going with 1993's Undertow. Undertow, for 
me is an album where I don't really dislike any of the tracks, but I do definitely have favorites, and some of these songs I will skip over occasionally during a listen. Intolerance, I kind of think is one of those tracks for me. I do see it as necessary for a listen through of this album because it is the opener, but occasionally I just kind of want to get to Prison Sex, which is uh, one of my favorite songs from this album, if not in their discography. And you can't forget Sober with the pummeling alt metal grooves and hypnotic passages. It's a classic for a reason. Bottom is great and has grown on me over the years to the point that it is now probably one of my favorite Tool tracks, and I absolutely love the Henry Rollins feature on this song. It's very simple and it's effective, and it makes the second half of this song just absolutely explosive after the uh, slow, brooding madness of Rollins' poetry. I think Crawl Away is probably one of the tracks that I usually skip over the most on this album. I'm not really sure why. I think in comparison to uh, the songs it's sandwiched between, it's kind of easy to pass over, but it is still a pretty solid track. A Swamp Song is brilliant. Undertow uh, is one of my favorite Tool tracks. Four Degrees is absolutely top-notch. I really wish they would play that track live again because I think it would be a very solid crowd-pleaser. And I've kind of always viewed Flood and Disgustipated as kind of glimpses of what's to come. While they're not my favorite songs here, they are very indicative of where the band would head in the future. Speaking of which, I think the next album I'm going with is 1996's Anima. This album, to my tastes, has uh, the most in the way of hits and misses. The misses, mind you, are still very good songs in their own right, but the stuff that lands for me here lands very hard. All of the singles from this album are the definition of classic. Stink Fist, with its walls of hypnotizing distortion, is a complete showstopper of an album opener. The Grammy Award-winning title track, Anima, is one of the best songs in metal as a genre. Eulogy, H, Push It, and Third Eye are all progressive masterpieces that make this one of the most unique albums in the modern musical landscape. And really, I just don't care for the interludes unless I'm sitting through the whole album in one sitting. They do add a little bit in that context. I think I'm gonna get crucified for this, but while I love 46 and 2, I think I've heard it enough times. It's brilliant. The bass line is iconic, but I, I think I've had enough. I also love the lyrics and message behind Hooker with a Penis, but I never really cared to listen through the song that much. I, to me, I think it's a novelty. I mean, like a really good novelty, at least. Uh, Jimmy, I think it hits pretty good, but doesn't really land as well for me. Anyway, yeah, I, I think my favorite tracks here are probably Anima and Push It. They're just both seriously just hefty, hefty offerings, and I could probably play them on loop for days. Man, all right, I, I guess we're into the top two already. And I have been really carefully considering these albums because I knew that they would be at the top of the list, but I didn't know which one would be really at the top. But for me personally, to my tastes, and don't come at me for this, I I'm going with 2001's Lateralis for my second favorite. If you're watching this, I don't need to explain to you the landmark album that Lateralis is. However, since we're here, this album to me is almost perfect cover to cover. I love The Grudge. I love Eon Blue Apocalypse into The Patient. I love Mantra and how it flows into Schism. I love Parable and Parabola. and They're just absolute masterpieces of music. I do not like Ticks and Leeches. I think it messes with the flow of the album a bit. And it sucks because by all rights, this is a good song. However, in the context within this track listing, it is too weak and too long of a song to be placed this deeply into the track listing, especially because right after it is Lateralis, one of the best tracks the band has ever put out. Okay, anyway, th that is my only gripe. I love every other track on this record, and I know some folks are probably going to call me a moron, but I, I don't care. Are all of the performances tight on Ticks and Leeches? Yes. Is it one of Danny's best drum tracks? Yes. Does Maynard do some of his best vocal work on the album? Yes. I still don't care for it because of the way they used it. All right, obviously, you know what's next because it's the last album on the list, but for my number one spot, and to me, the best Tool album, I'm going with uh, 10,000 Days. I think that this album is the one that I have most consistently listened to all the way through without skipping any tracks. I think Vicarious is one of their best pieces, and to me, above a lot of the other songs, it is the quintessential Tool track. I love the talk box solo on Jambi with the pounding bass work and the slamming drums. It's just a total jam. And I think most importantly for me, Wings for Marie and the title track 10,000 Days are on this one. And I absolutely adore these songs. They are some of the most emotionally powerful pieces of music ever written. We're in maggot brain territory. These two tracks are wonderful, and the tribute to Maynard's mother is absolutely flattening. The progression of the tracks is flawless. It's masterpiece material. And I know I've said masterpiece a few times in this video, but like, for real, like these songs are just genuinely, God, they're, they're all, I think they might be perfect. Anyway, 
past that, obviously you've got the pot, which took a while for it to grow on me. Be, you know, to, to be completely honest, it was one of the first tracks I liked from Tool. Then it kind of fell out of favor, and then the more I listened uh, to Tool, the more tracks I got into, um, I kind of liked this song less and less and less because it's it's very accessible. It's kind of a quick burn. You move past it pretty quickly, but then I, I finally came back around to it, and I just love that track again. And the music video for it, if they actually ever release it, is fucking amazing. If you've seen Tool live in the past few years, you have probably seen the music video for The Pot. It's fucking great. Lost Keys and Rosetta Stoned again touches that masterpiece territory. It tickles it, if you will. Not as hard as 10,000 Days, but it is still one of the best songs in their catalog. Intention and Right and Two as a closing suite are both incredibly strong. And I especially love Right and Two for the tabla solo, which is specifically just very killer. Uh, Danny does a fantastic job on that track. And man, I, I just think 10,000 Days from front to back is the most solid album that they have and the furthest fulfillment of their musical ambitions. Anyway, please let me know what you guys think in the comments below and tell me what your worst to best is. Thank you all so much again. Remember to like and subscribe and check out my Instagram and my Depop and my Reverb. Uh, links to those are all in the description below. Thank you all so much again and we'll see you on the flip side.